Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you. Um, and here's Terry to start the service off. Thank you much, John. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Unity of Michiana Spiritual Center. We want to welcome everybody here today, uh, whether you be here in person or whether you be joining us via our live stream technology uh, from home. Uh, from even your backyard, it's a pleasant day. Maybe not quite that warm, but, uh, or maybe you're joining us from some nice little bistro on this, in the south of France. Uh, I can dream, can I? So uh, welcome to you all. We're gl very glad you're here. Uh, and I want to share with you now uh, our Spiritual Center's uh, mission statement. We are a heart-centered, multi-generational, and diverse spiritual community dedicated to teaching and practicing a positive life approach in our spiritual journey. And our vision statement, a world united in loving acceptance, celebrating inclusivity, harmony, prosperity, and awakened consciousness. And I just want to mention that today, of course, is the first Sunday of the month. It is our day to celebrate birthdays for March, and we'll be doing that in just a few moments. Now, here at Unity, we have um, a bit of a ritual that we use uh, every Sunday at every service, and that is to light what we call our Christ candle. Now, the Christ candle represents Christ consciousness, 
the, the sense that each of us is part of a greater consciousness uh, that all humans belong to. And so uh, join me now as I light our Christ candle, recognizing that we are all one in that spirit. Go ahead. So look, I ask you to now to join me in our opening prayer. As we welcome spirit to join us, lead us, and unite us in this moment on this beautiful day. So spirit of love, of genius, of peace, harmony, thank you. We are here in gratitude. And we appreciate as you appreciate all of our individual spirits you who have given us this opportunity to serve, to love, to be happy, to joy, to celebrate, and also to live in gratitude for all that you have given us. So now we invite all of you to join together in the spirit of this service and open yourselves to the message that's here available for you today. And so we ask it and say and pray in your name. Amen. And uh, now I think it's time for bringing the children up. I ask that you rub your hands together. We see you surrounded in the light of God. We see you surrounded in the light of God. And we hold you close in our hearts. And we hold you close in our hearts. And now it's time to recognize the birthdays for the month of March. If you have a birthday this month, uh, we invite you, if you will, uh, either to raise your hand or stand in place uh, so we can recognize you. Those of you at home, if you are having a birthday this month, you may want to uh, point that out uh, th through the comments and Su Susan will notify us about that. Do we have anybody at, uh, with a March birthday? on live stream today, Susan? Uh, not this okay, all right. Sometimes we don't like to acknowledge just how those years get by us. So uh, we understand that, but we will bless you anyway. All right, so let's join together in singing happy birthday to all those. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. God is blessing you now. God is blessing you now. God is blessing you. You are wonderful. God is blessing you now. And now it's time for John and Tim to bring us some music. All right, so everyone welcome Tim to do a little bit of song leading to make it a little different and fresher. All right. Because I think you're bored of me. <laughs> okay. Um. Two, three. Get ready. Yeah. 
diving in to the deepest kind of love, to the sweetest kind of love. Get ready, get ready, my soul. Everything I've ever done. Everything I've ever seen Everything I've lost or won Everything I've ever dreamed Has brought me here To the present moment Here to a new beginning Reaching out to feel the infinite. I'm reaching out there you go. to know the divine. I'm reaching out to feel the infinite. Yet yeah, forever is already mine. I'm already there. I'm already home. I'm already safe in my eternal soul. I'm already there, I'm already home, I'm already safe in my eternal soul. Oh, Father of my soul, thank you for the blessings of the day. Blessings of the day, oh, mother of my heart. Thank you for the blessings of the day. I'm raising the veil between me and my God. No separation, no distance at all. God is right here in my heart. God is right here in my heart. In the veil between me and my God, no separation, no distance at all. God is right here in my heart, He's right here in my heart. It's right here in my heart I'm raising the veil Up, up, up to a higher 
new place up 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 far beyond this time and space up 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 to a higher place i feel my soul rising to a higher place i feel my soul rising to a higher place that was challenging <laughs> Um, it's it's my uh, Daniel, my m name odd medley that's based on his album Sacred Love. So it's kind of like a tribute to Daniel. And right? who better that we give tribute to one of the fathers of Unity Music, especially Daniel? When the, especially when the Peters are on, right, right, on the right. stage. <laughs> well, um, I am going to share the daily word with you. Those of you who are here, and I'm sure in our audience also know that the Daily Word is our daily scriptural and inspirational um, meditation booklet. So the word for today is dominion. I claim dominion and direct the course of my life. While I may not be able to control what happens in my life, I'm always free to determine how I will respond. Through my divine faculty of dominion, I decide what to think, what to say and how to act. If a thought of fear or powerlessness arises, I remember all the wisdom, understanding, and strength of God that are within me. Whether I'm organizing my day or moving forward after making a life-altering decision, the principle of dominion is always mine to claim. Knowing this, I move through life with quiet confidence. I am secure in myself and in the knowledge that I am a divine being. I claim dominion and feel my life expand into a field of limitless possibility and potential. And from Psalms 8, 6, we read, you have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. I claim dominion and direct the course of my life. So now, in a minute, we're going to move into meditation. I just want to say a couple of words about how I arrived at this topic for meditation, and it um, ties in with our speaker, Dr. Martha Creek. So I think I'm going to go ahead and um, introduce her now so I don't interrupt the flow of that process then as we later move into our video. Um, speaking of not maybe wanting to recognize how many birthdays have gone by, I was going to say that I've been in unity more than 30 years and Martha Creek has always been around during that time in my awareness. So maybe neither Martha nor I would want to recognize how many years that really is, but she is very widely known in New Thought. Martha's trainings approach deep inner work as an adventure with a sense of curiosity and wonder. A master of the art of right questioning, she calls forth the most stubborn and self-defeating patterns to create a new way of being, literally. She was ordained in religious science and divine science. Martha has served as Great Lakes Unity Consultant and is a member of the Unity Institute faculty. She's attended Emerson Theological Seminary, both for master's and doctorate work, the Byron Cady School for the work, one of my absolute favorites, and the Hoffman Institute. She's a healthy congregations facilitator and trainer. And I, um, I did preview the video yesterday as I was thinking about the service, and um, what she's going to be speaking about is our wonderful concept of divine order and what happens when that doesn't exactly pan out like we thought? Um, it made me think of what Barbara Jung told us one Sunday. She says, you know, one door closes and another one opens. But in the meantime, all heck breaks loose in the hallway. And so uh, Martha's going to be talking about what all heck breaks loose in that hallway as we're moving from one state of being to the other. And it made me think about a teacher I had been reading on, uh, online who was talking about, uh, someone had questioned her about could she address good and evil. 
Well, you know, I've probably been around unity a little too long to really use the word evil. I prefer right and wrong because, of course, I know what's right and that's good and what's wrong shouldn't be. So I'm just updating my language a little bit, but um, it's probably all the same. You know, Terry and I watch a lot of uh, streaming, especially since the pandemic started, and there are all these historical dramas in which evil is running rampant. And actually, to be frank, a lot of it is right at the uh, door of the church, who's persecuting people and saying what's good and what's evil. So we're still in the right place to be considering all of this stuff, I guess. Um, okay. So I guess before I ring the singing bowl, I'm just going to introduce my question that was in my mind and in this woman's mind whom I was reading. She was saying, are we really expected to be unmoved by these things that we see which we consider harmful or dangerous or evil? You know, are we so spiritually evolved that we can just float on by that? Well, uh, perhaps some of you are, but I'm not. And so that's why I really put myself out there for these talks because it's really something that I want to be learning for me, truth be told. So anyway, I'm going to ask uh, you to center into the level of your heart as I go up and play the singing bowl because this energetic vibration drops us into our heart where we're going to consider some deeper truths, hopefully. So let me, let me get up here. I'd like for you to start by considering this idea. Probably everybody in the room has either played a computer or video game or has certainly seen somebody else doing so. Some of the generation that is most into this uh, is not necessarily represented in this room right now because they are the kids that are Matt and Courtney's age. Um, but I do know enough about that when you play one of these games, you choose an avatar. There is an avatar provided, or you choose one for yourself that represents you in that game. And I will say that um, some people take these things very seriously. I've seen some people become quite heated and quite excited by being in the game and really forgetting that it's a game, it seems. So let's extend this analogy a little bit and say that we have chosen to come to Earth to play this Earth game, this game on this planet. So I guess you might say that we become our own avatar. We, we are the actor and the doer of the game. And it seems, of course, very real to us, as it should. Christian Sundberg had said that if it's not that real to us, we would all just wanting to be going back home all the time. So we need to, we do immerse ourselves in the reality of this earth plane game. So in doing that, sometimes it seems really hard for me personally to remember that it's only a game because I take these things very seriously at times especially if something threatens to cause harm to me or to threaten my well-being, either ourselves or to the people that we love. And I would add here animals and nature because I tend to be very uh, tender-hearted about those things. And so if, if some threat comes along that seems to, to threaten these things, I you know, become kind of hot under the collar sometimes. 
and I, a lot of you, if you're either a parent of a child, a human child or a fur baby, I think that you know that there's an instinct which arises to protect them. So let's think about just for a minute about what we've called evil in the past. And uh, a perspective which fits for me as a spiritual student, because I've said I don't know that I use the word evil consciously, but um, there are actions which we have judged as harmful, mean, hurtful, or even threatening to us. But as we look at this, we recognize that when we have been the one perpetuating these actions, or when we are seeing other people acting in that way toward us, we can really think about this arising from fear. Many actions that we see as evil or threatening are done because we or other people are operating out of our ego self not out of a consciousness of our higher or eternal self. So, those who act with harm in mind cannot truly love their own eternal self. And I will say that, you know, often we react, I react at least, by fighting fire with fire. My ego steps right in there and away I go. But then I was thinking about the teachings of Eckhart Tolle, who suggests, or I suggest in his place also, that your true, authentic self exists only in this current moment. The self's history and future are illusions, so they cannot really be threatened. But let's get back to the daily nitty-gritty of when we do feel threatened. Some things seem to offer threats to our physical security, our ability to live life safely and free from threat, the ability to live in homes and communities as we choose, to pursue our work or our career as we wish, and other issues which deal with creating safety and stability. Because you, we do know, we do need some stability in order to live this life here that we've chosen on Earth. We have to have things calm enough to uh, continue with the things that really bring other meaning to our lives. So, the woman I was reading suggests that we, it's good to accept and recognize behavior which does not fit who we are or what we need, but, and this is the big but, we don't have to judge it. And that is the really, for me, lifelong challenge, you know. I, I'm very quick to label, I believe, often, not often, but sometimes, wrong and right. So the question is that she was raising, how can we hold two things at one time that appear to be opposites? How can we believe and trust in a living source, a loving source, while we work to process these things in the outer world that I've just been talking about? Because she was saying, do we really are we able to trust that source enough to really pray the prayer, thy will be done? Which some teachers and mystics have really said it's the perfect and only prayer that we need. But boy, that takes a lot of trust sometimes. Um, so what can you do, what can I do, to reconcile um, this conundrum? Well, the first thing that came into my mind is that I really need to look at, or we really need to look and see whether our false ego is stepping in and creating stories. That's always a big one. When you're operating out of your higher self, you remind yourself that so-called evil things that others are doing look more like mistakes, errors coming from a deluded way of thinking about themselves and other people. Maybe it looks like immaturity, or ignorance, or a lack of understanding that there's another way to live in this realm. But as we are living more and more from our higher selves, we are less fearful, less judgmental, and more loving. Then, then you are more ready and able to open your heart to the love and help from a loving source God, creator, 
whatever word helps you imagine this and contact this energy. And so she says, whatever you wish to call upon, in whatever form, help and understanding will come to you in whatever way you need it. Now note, that's not always whatever way you want it or expect it, but we may indeed learn to trust that it is what we need. So I, I came to the idea that thinking about the question of defining and understanding right and wrong or good and evil as being a process, a process that we move through. It's mainly that we change, not the other nine billion people on the planet. They don't seem to change too readily when I believe that they should, but I can work on changing. Now, for one last thought, what do we do when these awarenesses really seem out of reach? So far, I don't think I've said anything that's probably new to the people in this room or the people online. But sometimes, if we're going through a dark night of the soul or a difficult patch, um, what can help us keep on moving? And Martha's going to talk some about that, too. But I remember, even in my younger days, as I would think about this, I would ask myself, hey, listen, would I be any better off if I didn't believe in a loving and benevolent source? Would I just be better off being an agnostic or worse? And then I would think to myself, no, of course. A, a thinking person, a smart person, an aware person, even if you can't feel it at the moment, would know and understand that it's helpful, more loving, more kind to live under the wings of that source. What would I benefit from if I held myself at a distance? Well, I wouldn't, of course. Which led me to a final thought, that you can trust yourself. You can trust yourself. If you're in this room or you're listening to me now, I know you can trust yourself to know what comes from the source and what does not come from the source. So you drop into your heart then and are steered by how peaceful, how loving, how self-accepting you feel as you turn your thoughts in a mindful way to your own awareness of the divinity within you. Now I'm going to ask Terry to come up here and uh, hold the prayer box for me as we hold in our hearts the prayers of the people in this box, the needs of loved ones, the concerns that we have for the well-being of the people that we love or, and or don't even know. But we focus our attention on the prayer box and the names and concerns held within it with that awareness that the divinity is at the very core of their being and of our being. At the, at the core of these situations, people and places which are in need of our love and support. So in that spirit, I invite you to speak aloud the names of any people or situations to whom you'd want to send this love and awareness of that indwelling divinity. Jenny and Donovan, Richard and Jolene, Matt and Nikki, Rhonda and Ken, our world leaders who are working to bring peace and understanding to this world. In love and gratitude, we give thanks for the blessings and the loving energy that we send out into the world that energy that touches hearts where it is needed. So we give thanks for the comfort and the healing available to us all. Amen.
so this is a continuation of the Sacred Love album, Daniel, Daniel Nimod, so please sing along. Yes, I am here to love. Yes, I am here to serve. Yes, I am here to be the love of God. Yes, I am here to love. Yes, I am. To serve, yes, I am here to be the love of God, my God, and I know forever and that I am love, and I know. concludes the service.
What is it we need to hear besides that? How many of you have been dreaming like this since your first memories? Since your very first memory. So it's like we came into this place. We came into this skins. We came into these bodies with a certainty that this was possible. We wouldn't be here. It's like, put me in coach. <laughs> then it's like, what the hell? Like, no, no, no. I don't want to play. I don't want to play these. I don't want to play this game. Who said there's going to be diseases? Who said there's going to be COVID? Who said there's going to be knuckleheads? Like, no, no, no. So everything then, so this, this order that we hold in our mind, this order, this dream, this vision of how it might be, could be, should be, wanted to be, needed to be, and then how it is. So this dream, this dream, this vision of what could be, what could be, what could be. And then, ugh. Like, who voted? I don't mean actually voted. We can't get into that. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Who picked? Who picked? Who said, oh, yeah, I'll send some knuckleheads. I need that for my salvation. Like, no, but do we have it? Do we have all that? Do we have Alpha and Omega? Alpha and Omega? Do we have it? We have order and everything's fine. And oh, look at this beautiful day. Then there'll be a tornado blow through here eventually or a hurricane or something. There'll be a tree down. Then it's like, <laughs> like yeah, disorder. Disorder too. And then what follows disorder? Reorder. Then some of you will run forward with your hand saws and chainsaws and your aprons and say, I'll clean up a tree. I'll clean up a tree. Somebody meet me over there. Let's clean up the tree. Somebody bring a rake. Let's get this stuff. That's what we do. That's what you've done here in this ministry since all my time that I've ever known about you. Are you so proud of this, what you've done here? Like give yourself a round of applause. And those of you that are watching, that are out there, a round of applause to you too. Because we know that you're sending energy here. We know you're sending energy of prayer and love and money here that takes reordering to do that. And then reordering our own mind. I had a significant death a couple of months ago. And all deaths are significant. Have you noticed? That death thing does not get a darn bit easier. Have you noticed? And it's like, it's like my heart kind of melted. Just went away. Like disappeared. And then all of a sudden, it started to come back in place. So it was like rebuilding itself. Reordering itself. And how I can best describe it is it reformed I have a reformed heart. Well, guess what? It's a better heart than I had in the first place. And I had a pretty doggone big heart. And I had a pretty doggone strong big heart. But as a result of that disorder, as a result of that grief, as a result of that loss, as a result of that, I have a reformed heart. It's a better heart. Because that's what it does the next iteration of it all <laughs> albeit painful albeit not fun reiterating evolving growing growing up accepting what I cannot change Coming out of these fantasies and this false notion that we all were born like Here's your certificate of birth. You'll have no struggle through all of your life. Like, oh, thank you. Let me frame that. Instead of like, no, here's your birth certificate. You're going to have all sorts of losses and challenges and pain and disruption. And it's why we're here. And it's why we're here. To create what's better than. To actually evolve. So I want to read something today. And this is from Clarissa Pinkola. 
Estes. Many of you be familiar with her. You can probably put in Pinkola and find it because I don't know of any other ones. In any dark time, there's a tendency to veer toward fainting. Have you noticed? Whoo, why me? After all I've done for God. <laughs> See, I'm a mind reader. In any dark time, there's a tendency to veer toward fainting over how much is wrong with things. How much is wrong with her? How much is wrong with him? How much is wrong with it? Who can bear it? To faint over what's not right in the world. What's unmended in the world. We're here, people. You're here. I'm here to see that, to observe that, and not focus on that. To not deny that it's here, and there's something else here, too. Yes, there's that. Yes. So no more denying that. You know, and like nobody burying their baby wants to hear it's all good. So do your best to heal from that today. And maybe back in heaven or in the, in the absolute, it's all good. Who knows? We'll find out. However, back here at the ranch, <laughs> we got unmended. We've got unresolved. We've got losses. We've got our tendencies to faint over all of this. There is a tendency to fall into feeling weaker. To being weakened by this. And the more we dwell on this, the more we focus on this, the more we're going to feel weaker from this. So one of my teachers, Dr. David Hawkins... In those books, Power Versus Force, and the eye of the eye says it's this simple. It's either going to strengthen you or it's going to weaken you. That's all there is to it. So every choice I'm making today, every thought, every emotion, every look I give somebody is strengthening me or weakening me. And then guess what? If I'm strengthened, Guess what else is strengthened? Everything. If quantum theory is true, then anything I can do today, any choice I make today, any exercise I make today to say, I'm going to be more mindful about that, I'm absolutely not going to do that as much as I would like to just slap some love into her. <laughs> I'm not going to do that because that would weaken me. Therefore, it would weaken the field. So I got to grow up another hair and have emotion and emotion not have me and go, okay, what would a more conscious person do? What's another option for me? So there's a tendency to fall into being weakened on this by dwelling, dwelling in what isn't and dwelling in what we can't do something about and dwelling in what we just can't reach is just out of our reach by dwelling on what's just not yet. We cannot focus there. That is spending, I'm reading now from her, she says that is spending the wind without raising any sales. Spending the wind without putting up a sale. So, stop it. So here we're here to harness the wind. We're here to put up a sail. We're, we're here to be a sail. And not to spend the wind without our sail. And it's like that meme that passes around. You know, with somebody standing over a shovel... Holding a shovel going, yeah, I'm going to pray that God's going to dig a hole. <laughs> like, well, stand there. Because guess how that hole will get dug. 
And one of my teachers said this years ago, when it was like, well, what are you going to do? Pray about it, pray about it, pray about it. Well, pray about it for sure and dig a hole. And if you've got a splinter in your foot, are you going to pray it out or pull it out? So pray for sure and action. And though we will meet resistance, And though you will meet resistance, and though I will, we also will meet great souls. We will, great, we will meet great souls who understand us. We'll meet great souls that think more like us. We'll meet great souls that support us, that love us, that guide us, that forgive us. We also meet great souls that says, yes. Together we can do this. Yes, together we can do what cannot be done alone. Yes, we will. So if you say you're a believer, didn't you make a pledge somewhere to listen to something greater than this? To pledge to say, I'm going to listen to something wiser than this. But I'm going to re-pledge that today. I'm going to re-vow that today. I'm going to re-devote myself to that today. That there is something to listen to besides this very limited, hurting, unhealed. And... Ours is not the task of fixing the entire world. Ain't that a relief? See if you can say it out loud. Mine is not the task of fixing the entire world. That is not my task. Or to do it all at once. But it is ours to stretch out, to stretch out, to expand. One more thought, one more mindfulness, one more discerned action, one more sane, sensible action instead of this knee-jerk, instinctual reaction to mend the part of the world that is within my reach. That'd be plenty, wouldn't it? If I heal the space I'm in, and I'm a healing energy and space for the space I'm in. So then whatever space I'm in, whatever interaction I'm in, whatever situation I'm in, that I'm there to heal that space. And then over time, and as it unfolds, then more space is healed. And it's evidently not in my timing. Or yours. So any small, calm thing that one soul can do to help another soul. One small, any small, calmer, calm, thoughtful thing that soul, your soul, can do to aid and benefit another soul has benefited your soul and your own soul's evolution and my soul's evolution to assist some portion of the world that is suffering to be of some assistance there helps immensely so there is no little thing then there is no little act as mother teresa said Small things, great big love. Small things, great big faith. It is not given to us to know which acts we are to do. Have you noticed your mind will be, well, what am I supposed to do? What's my purpose? I don't have no purpose. Martha Creek's got a purpose. I wish I had a purpose. It's like, well, nobody knows. There's no such thing as purpose. 
other than to, to be, we're being breathed. So instead of all that mental energy on what's my purpose, it's like, have some breakfast. You know, take a big deep breath before I fire off that email. Take a big deep breath before I fire off that text. So, so we're not to know what acts we're to do. We're not to know who we're supposed to do it with. Like, well, I kind of like her. I'm like, well, no, it's not her, it's him. I'm like, oh, I want her. I hope it can't be her. It's like, we're not to know who it is. We're not to know who it is or what it is. Just, what am, what am I? And what's possible through me if I continue to free myself from these attachments and these demands and these expectations. And then the resentments that follow when I don't get what I want. Speaking for myself, of course. So what is needed is dramatic change. Dramatic change. An accumulation of acts. Adding to, adding to, adding to, adding to, adding to. One more thing. One more little thing. One more little thing. One more little thing. And then continuing to do that. And to restore ourselves. Like coming to a spiritual center. Coming to scripture. Coming to a mantra. Coming to a friend. Coming to therapy. Whatever we can do to offload some of this other to renew our minds, to renew our souls, and to remember who we are, what is true of us, and what we're here to do, and the fuller and fuller capacity for that, that we're equipped for whatever's coming. We're equipped for it. See if you can say that out loud. I am equipped. I am equipped. There's nothing you've come through that you wasn't equipped for. But did you feel equipped? Like, heck no. But were you equipped? Absolutely. Absolutely. So draw on that direct experience. So whatever's coming, whatever I'm to experience here, I'm equipped to experience that. That's the only reality there is. We know that it does not take everybody on earth to bring justice to earth. Because if we wait for everybody, it won't take everybody on earth to bring peace on earth. But think about a tipping point. Think about a shift in consciousness. Think about as we move up in the map of consciousness, an evolutionary process, what happens when the mass reforms. A small, determined group of people who will not give up, who will not give up on the first try, who won't give up on the second try, and people who won't give up on the hundredth try. That's who we are. That we won't give up. So whatever it's going to take to keep our stamina higher and to keep our uncommon motivation intact to say that I am going to be that resilient. I'm going to be some, the one who won't give up until I see what I know is possible to see. So inch by inch, act by act. Interaction by interaction, conversation by conversation, prayer by prayer, word by word. So one of the most calming and powerful actions we can take to intervene into this stormy, dramatic energy that we're in is simply to stand up for our own soul. To be in touch with our own spirit and to be in a heightened level of spiritual self-care. And to know that it's the kindest thing I can do for the world. It's the kindest thing I can do for my family, my relationships. Is to keep my own spiritual self-care intact. And to the degree that I can do that, then I can potentially be some earthly good. 
And if I continue to let my spirit be drained off and my energies be drained off and I continue to do things that weaken, 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 then there's not much causation, creation, innovation, liberation that's possible because I've not accessed the upper room of our mighty, powerful, big brains and minds. The souls on deck, us, the souls on deck are here to shine. The light of the world, like gold. And whatever then can spark from that, that can spark another soul to go, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but she did it, and I, she believes I can, so I'm going to go with that. And how many times I've heard people say, Martha, I, I couldn't believe it myself, but I saw that you believed it, so I believed that you believed it, and it caused me to do something. So it opened a door. So we can be the believers for the people that can't believe yet. Just then spark and incite that, a new potential, a new possibility in that. And to display our own light, our light in the shadow of what's going on, our light in the shadow of situations, our light in the shadow of trees, our light in the shadow of any darkness. And that these acts are immensely courageous, immensely, immensely courageous. And when we operate from a consciousness of courage, more and more and more are possible. So at any time, regardless of how afraid or downtrodden or weak or broken we feel, which we normally will, to access even a hair of courage, a hair of courage. How have I done it before? How did I get through this before? How do they get through it? What can we do here? To access that opens up an entire world, an entirely new potential, infinite potential. So then struggling souls struggle less because we've held a space. We've sparked something. They see a new potential, a new possibility. And just to be a calm presence in an intense, dark, scary time is plenty. So this is not out of reach for any of us. So get a sense of being this light of the world. Not attached to order, absolutely understanding and accepting the nature of chaos, the nature of how we're born, what we're born, that there'll be times of order and times of disorder. And order and disorder, and order and disorder, and order and disorder, so we're not so affected by it we don't fall so much under its spell that it's got to be order all the time then we're less undone when we're in disorder like this is the movement of life this is the movement of energy of creation and she says this and she says it like this i hope you will write this on your walls when a great ship is in a harbor and moored, tied up, it's very, very safe. There can be no doubt much about what's going to happen to it. But that is not what great ships are built for. This comes with much love and a prayer that you remember who you are, how you're built, and what you're built for. That you remember what you came here for and why you came to this place, why you came to this life into this life and you came at this time into this planet that's in plenty of need for some of us to remember 
who we are, how we're built, and what we came here for. And I remember reading this years ago, and I thought, you know, I don't even buy that, that that ship that's tied up by that dock is always safe, because I watched them get pounded up against those docks and holes in them and lumbers off and everything else. And I thought, that's about how I feel when I start to resist, when I start to say I can't, because I can't is more often I won't. And it's not what we're built for. So get a sense of it today. Sense of it in your body. And see if you can affirm with me. I accept order. I accept there's order. I accept that there's disorder. And I accept reorder. And who you would be living that out. What that one thing would do to change the experience of your life. Of this life. Wow. Well, Martha, you knocked my socks off. So let us feel that gratitude in our hearts for what we have received for this message, this enlightenment, these words of encouragement and power. And so we are filled with gratitude. Amen. Let me share with you now uh, just a few uh, of our happenings and events here at Unity Spiritual Center. Uh, coming up, um, uh, we have a movie night this coming Saturday, March 11th, uh, here at Unity. We'll be having a social time at 5.30 and then start the movie at 6 p.m. Uh, you are invited to bring your favorite beverage, and then we will provide popcorn, uh, movie snacks, and pizza. Yeah, pizza. Okay, my face lights up, pizza. And uh, for your viewing pleasure, we'll be watching the movie called The Peanut Butter Falcon. Now, our son Matthew um, uh, has seen this, and, and he should be here telling you about it, because whenever he speaks about it, it's like you want to get up and jump around for joy. So this, is, this should be a great film. So we urge you all to be here and join in the fellowship and the fun on Saturday evening. Bring your family, friends, and, uh, and or a date, okay? And then uh, if you have any questions, you can see Chrissy Smith. Uh, co this coming Wednesday uh, and beyond, our Wednesday Zoom group will be taking a break, and they will return on March 22nd. Uh, Emil Toth um, has recently completed his newest book called Walk With Me, a Spiritual Memoir. He is offering copies uh, of it for a donation to Unity of Michiana, and you can choose the amount of the donation. And uh, he requests merely that you write a review after reading the book. And books are located in the foyer here at the center. And I think that's all of our announcements for now. So now let's take a moment to uh, uh, look into our hearts and our pockets at this time of our offertory. Um, and uh, let me uh, remind you that, um, for, that uh, our offering is um, an opportunity for you to give or tithe by going to our web uh, website and uh, clicking on the yellow donate button or by using our app. There's also a basket at the back of the sanctuary here. Um, so if you're like me, kind of old fashioned, you can also uh, give that way and place your offering in that basket or you can scan the QR code that is on our door at the back of the sanctuary as you leave. 
So let's uh, take a moment now to join in our offertory affirmation together. With a grateful heart, I celebrate God's abundance as I give freely and receive with joy. Now, let us uh, join together uh, in uh, uh, the uh, closing song. So, John, go ahead. Okay. Kick, kick us into that. that was meant to be with God our creator family all are we let us walk with each other in perfect harmony let peace begin with me let this be our moment now with every step I take, let this be our solemn mind, to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth, and let it be And so thanks to all those who helped put this service together and bring it to you. Thanks to all of you who joined us from home or are here, or here in person. Thanks to Kevin and Susan and John and Tim uh, for their contributions today. As always, uh, deep from within their hearts with love. And so now let us join together in our closing prayer, our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And all is well. And so it is, and so we let it be. Go forth, enjoy this beautiful day. Have a wonderful week. And join us again late on next Saturday for the movie and next Sunday for our service. Thanks for being here. Up, up, up to a higher place. Up, up, up. Far beyond this time and space Up, up, up to a higher place I feel my soul arising in a higher place Higher place, higher place I feel my soul arising to a higher place No more spinning around and around My life is moving ever upward My feet are leaving the ground Up, 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 up to a higher place Up, 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 far beyond this time and space up, up, up to a higher place. I feel my soul arising to a higher place. I feel my 
soul, arising to a higher place. 